All right, so in this video, we're going to show how to read a, with a multimeter and how you should actually, you know, go about reading an AC circuitry. Um, now, in this uh, indication, we will have a three-phase to a system, to converting down to a single-phase uh, uh, 208 to a transformer, and that will be going to a 110 circuit after the transformer. So a control circuit, basically, we're controlling a motor. Uh, we do have this where we can control the motor and turn the motor on and everything work accordingly. Now again, when it comes down to that, um, you know, that's just the way the system works, right? So again, so it's very important to note too, if you're dealing with an AC or DC, or even if you're reading ohms or something of that nature, you need to make sure you put your meter in the correct position. Now there is indications on the meter for that. Uh, there'll be like a V with a waveform that will be uh, AC is a waveform. DC is a direct current, so it's going to be like flat, right? And then ohms would be obviously, uh, the, basically it looks like a horseshoe symbol, but that's ohms, right? So you don't want to be on ohms trying to, to you know, check voltage because again, you have a potential of actually, you know, blowing something up or actually getting yourself shocked. So just keep that in mind. Very, be very, very, it, the most critical thing I can think about when I think about using a multimeter for one is the posi the position you have your meter in, right? So if we're dealing with the AC system, we should have it on a V uh, and then it should be on a waveform. Generally speaking, that's what you're going to see or either it will indicate a voltage uh, AC. You know, it depends on what kind of meter you do have. Uh, there make several different variations of these things. So it's hard to determine what you may have in your hand right now. But when it comes down to it, understand, make sure that it's very, very critical that you have it on the right thing. All right. So um, any, even if you have to research or Google what type of meter you have and what indication you should be flipping that dial to, if you don't know, ask somebody around you that may know that may help you. Because again, safety is the number one key to using a multimeter. Now, when that goes to be said, uh, we want to talk about using this multimeter, right? So what we want to do is we, we already threw it on a AC current, right? So our AC AC um, voltage, right? So we have a 208 system, three phase th uh, 208 system going down to a 110 um, system down here after the transformer. So we can take our very first lead which is our positive lead, or our, we, you'll take your red lead. The black lead is generally your common lead. You're gonna put it, um, that's gonna be your common for generally for the, for the actual meter. Um, again, when it comes down to it, that's where you put your meter. So we would have 208 volts if we were to read phase to phase. Now, if we're reading phase to phase, we have two leads on our, on our meter, right? So we're, we're actually reading single phase 208. Now, again, if you had three, um, then you would have like a power meter or something like that. Then you could read all three phases and even power quality at that point. But on a very simple meter like we have here, we're actually looking at where we have two phases, right? That we can look at, which is single phase power when we're looking at a three phase system, right? So we think about it uh, between phase to phase, between uh, L1 and L3, we have two, uh, 207 volts, 208 volts, right? roughly 208 um, and then we have the same thing there now if we check the transformer top of the transformer which is H1 and H2 right here we can check the top of the transformer and that should be 208 as well single phase so we're feeding the top of the transformer single phase 208 right now um, you want to take your leads off and you want to come in and make sure you you always take your leads off before you change to read anything else, right? And you wanna make sure your meter's working before you start trying to measure voltage anyway. So that's a very another critical thing. So we're reading the bottom of the transformer, which is gonna give us what, it should be giving us 110 or 120 volts. So at this point, it's reading as 120 volts, and that's our circuit coming out of the actual system right here. Now, how I can determine that, again, is basically, uh, we have a transformer, it's got power going through it. We are simulating that, right? And we can actually run our motor. So we actually can run our motor. All right, so and just to show that, uh, just to show the how that works, if I were to put my multimeter down here and I read the backside, which is the backside of this coil right here, right? I'm reading zero volts. Now, 
This is if you're troubleshooting a, let's just say a, a 110 control circuit or something of that nature. When I push this button right here, then I should have 120 volts. And I do. Now, that's because I'm the, the voltage is traveling through the button now and then going through, uh, I'm on the back side of the button, so I'm if I was testing the button to see if I had voltage or continent, uh, conductivity through the button, if the button contact was sticking or if it had a problem or if there was dust in it or, or that it was just some kind of, uh, maybe it's a bad faulty button or something, if I was testing that to see if it worked, if I got 120 volts coming out of the button when I pressed it, then everything is good. If I did not, then the, the button would could be suspect, right? They could you could may need to change the button. At that point, you lock everything out and you change the push button, right? Now again, uh, so reading un and understanding the voltage behind that. Now let's just say uh, I was trying to read the back side of the stop button and I was trying to test the stop button. I would do the exact same thing, right? Now if the stop button is open and that's a normally that button it just happens to be a normally closed button. So when I press it, it opens up. Now if for some means they fail, they generally try things nowadays, generally try to fail safe, um, but they don't always, so keep that in mind. Uh, if the button does fail, this is a way to test to see if you have your voltage, right? So, and this is a coil. So I could have did all of this from the back side of this coil as well. So if I open up any of this, you can see testing the coil, if it's on or off, depends on if the but if the switches are in the right position, right? Uh, and that's very, very critical to understand. So just you keep in mind those those couple tips when you're thinking about using a multimeter. Um, always keep your meter leads in a safe thing. Make sure you do have you know everything in the right uh, position. If you're reading uh, ohms or something like that, you can ohm something out. Uh, make sure if you're ohming something out, there is no power present. Again, you do not want to cause any kind of safety risk. Uh, you do know that, and most meters nowadays are smart enough to protect you, but you may may have a cheaper one or something. You, you may have a one that is not so sophisticated. So just always err on the side of caution when you're using your meter. And if again, when if you don't know, there's never a stupid question when it comes to electricity. Always make sure you ask somebody around you. Maybe they can help you. Again, give you guidance, somebody there. I'm making this video to simply show you the basic principles of reading a um, 208 three-phase system and then what you could expect. Again, put your meter in the right thing, come over here, uh, put your leads on there, and you should be reading 208. Same thing down here. If you come down here on the back side of the transformer or we're reading anything, let's just say anything on the actual circuitry, right, and read any, anything. Uh, we could be re treat, trying to read the buttons, right? So I'm going to put one lead on the neutral and I'm putting one lead on the hot. And I'm pushing the button and then I get my 120 volts. So you can see how that's done. You can see how that's functioning. And then when I cut my meter off, so I always generally, my best practice is to always test my meter with a known sor source first so that I make sure my meter works properly first. And then again, when it comes down to it, all else fails, ask somebody because there never is a dumb question when it comes to electricity. Stay safe and stay function, stay have everything fun functioning the way it should be because things do fail on their own. And again, you wanna make sure you, you test them before you use them on a live system anyway. So when that comes down to it, hopefully you learned a lot on this video. And again, if you did learn something or if you liked, please share this with somebody. It could help them. Could It could very well save their life when it comes to using a multimeter properly. So when it comes down to it, I hope you learned a lot from this video. Again, I appreciate your support and we'll see you guys on the next one.